my guest for today, Rome De La Rosa, defensive player of Magnolia Hotshot. Podcast idol. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> What's your career in basketball player in high school? It was a great uh, basketball career in a way because um, it was different being uh, being a high school player in the States. You know, not a lot of Filipinos on my team, so it's more African-Americans or, or black um, playing, which, which helped me in a way. And, you know, it was a great experience for me. So, but starting off, you start because, you know, when you're a freshman and a sophomore, you're barely playing and then. But as you get, you become a junior and a senior. You play more, and you get, you gain more experience, and you have, you have the confidence to play. I was playing baseball as third baseman and catcher. My first sport when I moved back to the states. I was born in the states, so when I moved back, um, I played baseball. Um, playing third base and catcher, um, it's a lot different. You know, baseball is an American sport. Um, um, you and the pitcher have to have a connection, and you know. Depending on the on the pitches, it's there. I had experiences where it was hard to catch, or you have to block it. So it was tough. Catcher is a really tough position to play. Why do you choose basketball over baseball? Basketball, you know, it's always it's in my blood. You know, I grew up watching my dad. Uh, my dad played in the PBA, so basketball has always been the sport at home. And of course, that was that's good. It'd be in my blood, and I ended up, you know, choosing that over baseball, and I would choose it any any time over the over baseball. How's the feeling to have four straight champion in NCAA? Oh man, um, four NCAA championships! It's a it's a huge blessing um, for me. Um, it's not easy, you know. You have to face the likes of uh, San Sebastian and Latran and other other good colleges in the NCAA. But it's 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 a it's a blessing for me, you know. It's it's hard. It's not something anyone can do. So it's a lot of hard work, of course. And you know, that's where you build a bond with your teammates too when you win a championship. It's a different type of bond. Top three toughest opponent players in college. Okay, college. Okay. Well, I, I would go with the NCAA because mm-hmm. those are the guys you play for them for the most part. So. Carlo Leste Mosto would have to be one. Kuya Calvin with his energy. <laughs> and think of another one. Hold on, hold on. Wow. That's, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, maybe Kevin Alas. I'll put Kevin Alas. How's your stint in Alaska? Um, with Alaska, it was a short... Well, you can't say short. It was two years for me, you know, and it was it was a great experience. You know, you get to you get drafted to a company like Alaska. When you say Alaska, there you know there's that's a lot of championships. A lot of great players went play, went and played for Alaska. So you know, just just the name Alaska. That's something you know I, I would remember when I was younger. It was a great stint. I mean, I was able to you know. Play alongside JB Casho, RJ Azul, and Don Kuya Don Don, Cyrus Baguio Sanitas, just to name a few, and also the Kuya Calvin. And of course, uh, who was team captain at the time, Tony De La Cruz. So playing along those those vets, you're able to learn more. And then I also Eric Meck, so you get to learn from those guys and what it took to to be able to stay in the PBA and and you just see, you know, how, how they are when they carry themselves. Can you share your game winner against Hinebra last conference after Calvin Abueva was ejected? Yeah, it wasn't, well, it was a clutch basket. It kind of, it was a two-point game at the time. You know, Gio found me again. I think it was Gio. He found me in the corner, oh, not the corner, wing. And then I was able to hit the shot. So that was big, you know, playing against Hinebra. You know, you, you know the fans are gonna get into into it, so that's that's big. And you know, it's different when you play in Nebra because you know the crowd gets you going and the pride. Then, because Manila Clasico. I was playing alongside Calvin Abueva. I love, I love playing alongside Kuya Calvin. You know, he brings a lot of energy on the court, a lot of experience. Now, you know, he's been in the league for so long in the PBA, and it's just fun. You know, he. He, it's fun playing with Kuya Calvin, and he does a lot of things for you on the team. So, 
Kay Calvin is one of those guys na ayaw mo makalaban pero gusto mo sa team mo. So, I'm blessed. Friendly <laughs> question, who do you think will want you or Paul Lee in one-on-one? Ooh, that's tough. I'll give it to Kuya Paul. <laughs> you know, Kuya Paul is a great one-on-one player. I I don't consider myself as a one-on-one player. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I won't make it easy for him. You know, I'll make it hard. Um, I'll make him... Make it tough for him, but you know, Kuya Paul is Kuya Paul. That's the lethal weapon. How's Coach Chito? Coach, you know, um, he's a player's coach, so I, I do love playing for him, and um, I'm thankful to him because he does he does give me the time, and um, he believes in me and he trusts me with his, with the, what he does at Magnolia. So, yeah, nothing nothing but great things about Coach Chito. So, hopefully, we have more years together. How hard to defend Mikey Williams? Oh, uh, Mikey. <laughs> he's a he's tough, man. I mean, when he gets once he starts hitting his shots, you know, it, it, I mean, I mean if he, I think it was game game 5. Yeah, I think game 5, I mean, we were able to limit him as a team. And then he just that that bank shot got him hot and then you know, it was hard. It's hard to stop. It's hard to stop Mikey. I mean, he's a great scorer. You know, once he hits his shot, he gets going, he gets hot, and he's just confident. Well, you should know I want to confidence here. So, for that guy, for a streaky shooter like him, once they get hot, you're in trouble as a defender. So, you do your best to try to to just make it tough for him. And, and he's a great, great player. So, you know. I'm curious how much film do you watch about the player assigned to you? Um, before, I didn't watch as much but you know i would watch games and then just look at their tendencies and stuff like that but but now you know as you get as you get older you you know that i say if guys have been in there for so many years you're like all right this is what he's gonna do but guys do get better every year so you just do your best to you know to pick your spots and what you want them to do and make it tougher for them as a defender Last question, why do you choose Jersey 19? Okay, Jersey number 19. It started at San Beda. Um, they gave me two options. It was number 15 or number 19. Um, uh, for me, coming in, you know, I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself. It was already pressure, you know, trying to follow the foot, footsteps of my dad, Romy, who's, you know, who's known in the PBA. Number 15, that was Kuya Oji Menor's number the year before. So I was like, oh, I don't want to be compared to him as much. You know, we play the same position. We kind of, you know, I'm going to be repl- kind of, I'm going to be coming in to, to that hype that Kuya Oji left. So I, I, I ended up going with number 19. Uh, but in high school, I was, my favorite number is 11. Talaga. And unfortunately, that time in, at San Beda, number 11, si Anjo Karam. So it worked, it worked out well naman. Thank you for watching. Please also subscribe my YouTube channel.